The FSK modifications are now complete on the Helicrafter's HT44 transmitter. I'm just going to go over exactly what was done. An RCA phono jack was installed for the FSK input and the white wire is the FSK line. That line then goes to an unused position on the terminal strip where two resistors are soldered in as a voltage divider. There's a 330K to ground and a 3.3 mega ohm to the minus 110 volt bias point from the power supply. This provides approximately minus 10 volts bias on this line when nothing is connected to this line or if it's open. That's important and I will discuss why later. The line then continues through the harness and ends up here near the VFO compartment. The wire connects to a 6.8 K resistor and then a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to ground. This is the key click filter to soften the uh, make and break contacts. The filtered output then goes through an RF choke, 2.5 millihenries, and then that drives a germanium diode to ground, and in parallel with that germanium diode is a trimmer capacitor, about 20 picofarads, 25 picofarads, adjustable, and a gimmick capacitor, which is this white wire which goes through the hole where the lead from the VFO coil to the VFO variable capacitor, which is on this main tuning knob, is attached. So it's a very small capacitance coupling between the white wire and the VFO capacitor lead, a fraction of a picofarad, and then you have a, a trimmer capacitor to ground. So under mark conditions, a mark condition is when the teletype keyboard contacts are closed so that this white wire is grounded or if you're using a modern a, a TTL or op amp driver you would have a positive voltage for mark so either positive voltage or ground is the same thing what happens is this point here the diode point is ground or a positive voltage it's biased on or shorted out as the case may be which basically means that the gimmick capacitor is the full gimmick capacitance to ground. The trimmer is shorted out. So that is going to give you a certain VFO frequency. When you have a space condition, this line is open if you're using a traditional teletype keyboard. Or if you're using an op amp or TTL driver, you would put a negative voltage on there, RS-232, like a negative 12 or something. Uh, but in the case it's open, your negative bias is going to come from here anyway, from these high-valued resistor dividers. So you're still going to get minus 10 when it's open, or you can supply minus 10 or minus 12 externally. So under those conditions, this diode is reverse biased. And so because of the RF choke, from an RF point of view, this point here now is open, which basically means you now have the gimmick capacitance in series with the trimmer capacitor. So you have less capacitance shunting this VFO line. And that means a higher frequency. Now because of the way that this HT44 is heterodyned, a higher VFO frequency means a lower RF carrier output frequency on the bands, on 80 through 10 meters. And the lower frequency is what you want for space for a normal FSK polarity. So it's functioning just fine. Now when you're not using the FSK, you would obviously not plug anything into that jack. And I didn't want to have a floating wire connected to a diode on the VFO because any hum or noise picked up on that line would modulate the VFO. So by providing this negative 10 volts bias on the uh, uh, FSK line, this guarantees that 
the diode is not conducting and uh, you have your space condition because it's not connected. The mark is when you short that line or provide a positive voltage to turn the diode on. So these were all done in the 60s uh, when this radio came out and uh, a lot of operators operated uh, full RTTY on this uh, using this Helicrafters HT44. So the next step will be to uh, calibrate that trimmer capacitor to give me the 170 hertz shift that I want. FSK modification for the Helicrafters HT44 for RTTY operation.